over $50,000 of debt. I had to stop spending money on certain things. And I'm going to share with you the 14 things I cut out of my budget so that you can achieve your goals of paying off debt, buying that house, achieving generational wealth, and maybe taking that trip to Bali. Hi, I'm Shane of The Well Five, and I create videos to help you eliminate debt, grow your income, and build wealth. I started off with $108,000 of debt, and I decided one day that I wanted to get rid of all of it. But I'm still in the process of getting it all knocked out, but I have made a lot of progress. I paid off over 50% of that debt so far. But in order to get to that point, I had to get real with myself and I had to decide that I was gonna stop spending money on certain things so that I could achieve my goal of being debt free. And I know that you wanna achieve your financial goals as well. And so I'm going to help you out because I already know that it can be tough facing your finances and it can be difficult pinpointing some things that you wanna cut from your budget because you've been doing this for so long and you just don't know where to start. So I'm gonna share with you the 14 things that I stopped spending and cut from my budget so that I could achieve my financial goals. And I hope that you'll be able to pick up a few things so that you can also achieve your financial goals. But before I get started, I want you to drop down in the comment section and share the things that you cut from your budget so we can have a bunch of ideas of things that we can stop spending money on so that we can be closer to our goals. As a woman, you know that it can get really expensive with the upkeep cost of maintaining our beauty. And one of the things that I decided on a few years ago is that I wanted to grow my hair long. I had my hair long growing up and then I cut my hair for several years throughout college and then I finally decided I wanted to grow my hair long again. And if you know anything about growing your hair long, you know that trimming your hair is super important. But it costs a lot of money to go to a hairstylist to trim your hair. And so I decided that I was just going to do my own trims. So on a regular basis, sometimes even like daily, I try to cut that out. But at least weekly or every two weeks, I will be in the mirror with a pair of scissors looking at my ends and trimming my split ends. And what has happened is that I've been able to grow my hair the longest that it has ever been. Growing up, my hair was always around bra strap length, but now my hair is around waist length and it's all due to me cutting my hair on my own. And I've been able to save a few dollars and a few inches because if you've ever been to a hairstylist to have them trim your hair, you know that they aren't trimming specifically for split ends. A lot of times, they're trimming your hair to make sure that it's even. And having even hair isn't really that important to me. What's important to me is making sure that the split ends are gone. And so I'll pay particular attention to the split ends and make sure that I don't have split ends. And the evenness doesn't matter because my hair is curly anyway, so you can't tell. Handbags. That's one thing that I stopped spending money on. I never was a handbag girl growing up, but then somewhere along college, I picked up this habit. And I talked about it a little bit in this video that I did on the worst money decisions that I ever made and how I spent over $200,000 on worthless things. I talked about handbags and how designer handbags was a mistake that I made and something that I committed to not spending money on when I was on my debt payoff journey. And so I have been rocking with the same handbag for probably four, maybe five years now. I got my handbag in 2015 as a Christmas gift and I am still rocking it and I refuse to spend money on a handbag especially a handbag that costs more than the one that I have now which probably is around $300. I do not shop for trendy clothes at all. I shop for clothes that are really functional and are very purposeful and so although I don't have many clothes and many times I'm like what am I gonna wear especially when it comes to like going on a date or going on a fun activity with friends. I have just practical clothing and it has saved me a lot of money by making sure that I buy like essential items and items that have a true purpose or function. When I first started my debt payoff journey, I had just finished watching What the Health. So you can say that maybe around the time that I started my debt payoff journey, 
I also was just, just going through a renaissance, a rebirth of myself and just changing a lot of things because I also decided that I was gonna cut out meat. So like beef, chicken, and those types of things. I still ate seafood, but very sparingly. And by cutting out meat out of my diet, I spent a lot less money on food every single week for groceries. Now I will admit that I started to incorporate meat back into my diet, but I personally do not pay for it. I went through this stage in college where I was buying up all of the MAC makeup. And it kind of was during that time where YouTube beauty gurus were on the scene and trying to teach everybody through tutorials how to improve their makeup. And I was trying to improve my makeup as well. So I was buying all the eyeshadows, all the blushes, everything. And then I realized, Shayna, you don't really even like all that stuff. So I do still have a few staples but I don't go out and buy eyeshadows, for example, and I don't buy blush. I love blush, but I don't buy it because it lasts a long time. And I don't buy eyeshadows because I don't like wearing eyeshadows. <laughs> and having so many different eyeshadow colors adds up. So I decided that I was gonna pare my makeup down to the essential items that I need. Last year, I did an audit of my spending. And I looked at my spending over a span of three months. And based off of that audit, I realized that I spent a lot of money at Target. And anybody that's ever been to Target, and I'm pretty sure that's you, you know that you go into Target for that one thing, and then you leave out with a basket full of other things. So although Target, I have the Target 5% uh, debit card, 5% cashback debit card, I do not go in Target at all really. I probably will only go into Target to buy toothpaste because I think that's the place that I found the best deal on toothpaste that. But other than that, I don't go into Target. I literally cut Target off. Growing up, my mom worked for an airline. And so I traveled really early on. I wanna say like in the first six weeks of my birth, I traveled and I traveled pretty much every week after that in the first few years of my life. And we were just a traveling family. My family's from Jamaica and we would travel to go see the rest of the family and whatnot. So I just grew up always traveling. And so it killed me when I realized that I was gonna to have to eliminate traveling from my budget. It, someone once asked me what one of my favorite places were and I told them the airport <laughs> was one of my favorite places. And so you can imagine how difficult it was for me to eliminate vacations and traveling from my budget because I had always been traveling and I loved it and I saw the value in it. So I have to suffer. <laughs> I have to suffer when I see all my friends and families taking these trips to the continent of Africa, to Greece, all over Europe, going to Asia and spending 10 to 12 days and I can't go anywhere. I can't even go somewhere in the state, y'all. <laughs> so I have since decided to put a travel sinking fund into my budget after I've reached certain um, goals with my debt payoff. Now that I've paid off all my debt except for my student loans, I am saving for travel and I do go a few different places that are really inexpensive. But it's one of the things that I just had to sacrifice. No matter how much I loved it, I had to cut it out of my budget because you know that a vacation can easily rack up at least $1,000. I'm the type of girl that loves to eat out. I love the variety, I love the different cuisines, I love the convenience. And to make it all worse is that I will literally order two or three things off the menu because I just wanna taste them. So for me, eating out costs a lot. It adds up for me. So what I decided was to cut it out completely. I cut it out of my budget because I would spend so much money on eating out. And so what I decided was that I was gonna be intentional about when I have to eat out. It had to be a special occasion or it had to be a situation where I know I wasn't gonna be able to have an alternative way of eating besides spending money. And so I would make sure that I saved up for those special occasions or had a little money saved up so that I could, in an emergency situation, be able to eat something. And so literally what I do whenever I'm thinking about like eating somewhere, I'll be like, girl, you got food at home. I literally refer back to my childhood days when my mom would be like, we have food at home. 
When I started my debt payoff journey, I had also just moved to Atlanta and I was looking for a new apartment. And one of the things that I wanted to make sure was included in my apartment was a really nice gym. Cause I wanted to make sure that I had access to a gym that I would feel motivated to go to, but also so that would reduce the amount of money that I would have to spend on a gym membership. And a lot of people, they will spend money on their rent <laughs> that includes a gym and then turn around and spend money on a gym membership and a lot of times don't even go to the gym that they're spending extra money on. So I was very intentional about making sure that I reduce my, my exercise costs by either going to the gym in my apartment complex or going to the gym at my job. And a lot of times those are options that we can really utilize or just work out at home. And because it will save us a lot of money, especially when you realize that a lot of people don't even go to the gym despite spending like $100 a month on their gym membership. I cut the cord years ago on cable, but like you, I replaced it with a subscription to Netflix and Hulu. And then I was realizing, why are you paying for Netflix and Hulu when one, you don't even like the stuff that comes on Netflix half of the time. And then the other times you don't even have the physical amount of time to watch shows on Hulu. So I decided that I was going to cut my subscriptions to Netflix and Hulu as well. And I also looked at other subscriptions that I was paying into because a lot of times we just get into the habit of having access to these things and they're literally deducting money from our bank accounts every single month and we're not using them. And so I decided to stop paying for Netflix and Hulu. So whenever a little show comes out that I do want to watch on uh, either one of those, I'll just ask somebody, hey, can I get the password? <laughs> and if that fails, I will just buy it for that month and not buy into it for the year. And I literally will put a timer on my phone, or not a timer, I'll put an alarm or a date in my calendar to tell me when I need to cancel that subscription. That goes for anything. And along with subscriptions, you wanna think about those subscription boxes. So like the Birch Box, the Scentbird, the, what is it, the shoe stuff. Like, oh, what is that shoe one called? Fab, Fab Shoe or whatever it is. And Dollar Shave Club if you're a man. All those things, you wanna cut them because a lot of the time you're spending money on a monthly basis just to get a box full of things that you don't like. And then you end up adding a lot of clutter to your home. And then if you do find that one product that you like, you've already spent probably two times the amount of money that you would have spent on that item just to receive a sample size. So I feel like it's just a smart decision to cut the subscriptions and go buy the things that you actually like and want from the store and spend the amount of money that that costs rather than getting a box full of stuff that are sample size that you don't like anyway. So be mindful of the subscriptions and one service that I really like that helps out with identifying the hidden costs that you are spending on subscriptions is the Clarity app. It's totally free and what it'll do, it will search your, your transactions to see if there are any subscriptions that you're paying for because sometimes we don't pay for subscriptions on a monthly basis. Sometimes they're every six months or every year and it'll keep a lookout for those subscriptions and let you know, hey, you're spending way too much money on this subscription, do you want to cancel it? And they will go about the process of helping you to cancel that subscription. So I would highly recommend it and if you are interested in it, you can check it out in the description box below. But be mindful of those subscriptions because they add up a lot. I would like to say that I'm a really great gift giver and I go overboard. Once I decide that I want to give someone a gift, I will spend too much. I, I know, I will spend too much money. So what I decided to do is that I'm just not giving any gifts. I cut gift giving out of my budget. And that might be a little too dramatic for some people, but sometimes you need to do those dramatic measures to make sure that you're putting your financial goals first. It's really important that you put your own oxygen mask on when it comes to your financial situation and worry about you ra rather than worrying about giving gifts to other people so that you can look good in their eyes or make them feel good or whatever it is. So one thing that I did was cut the gifts. So that's the birthday gifts, the anniversary gifts, the Christmas gift. But then it was a little dramatic for me, so I decided as I was able to reach some of my goals 
then I would put in limits to how much I would spend in certain categories. So the first year I spent nothing on gifts, zero dollars on Christmas and birthday gifts. Then the next year I decided to put a $25 limit on gifts per person. Now, given that I'm in a financial situation where I'm not have, making as much money, I am back to spending zero dollars on gifts. So this Christmas, I will not be buying any gifts. And so you might be thinking like, oh, people are gonna dislike me for not getting gifts and you know, people are gonna give me gifts. One thing that I did for that was I told people, I have a goal. I'm trying to meet this goal. And so in order for me to meet this goal, I cannot give gifts. And I don't want you to give me a gift either. And they will understand and many times they'll be happy <laughs> because they'll be like, thank God, I don't have to spend money on getting this person a gift. And so it helps out everybody in the end. So when I started working, my work environment was one where we would have monthly birthday celebrations. And I decided that that just didn't fit in with my financial goals. So I did not participate in the monthly birthday celebrations. So in my workplace, what they did was they would ask for someone or two people to bring in items for the monthly birthday celebration. And it would add up. We had about 70 people in my branch and in order to have enough food and beverages for everyone, people would literally buy sheets of cake. They would have to buy the chips, the dip, the soda and other beverages and cookies and candy and all types of stuff. And I'm pretty sure that a lot of my coworkers spend at minimum $50 and maybe even upwards to $100 to contribute for these work celebrations. And although most people only contributed once a year, I decided that just was not in my budget and I did not contribute in that way. I picked up this habit a long time ago. So in college, you know, we used to club, we used to go out to the club and it would cost like, you know, $20 to go out to the club. But most of the time as a woman, the cover charge would be free. And so I decided a long, a long time ago, over 10 years ago, when I was in college, that I was only going to the events where the cover charge was free for women or for all people. And so I still live by that today. I do not go to a place where the cover charge is above zero dollars. I will not pay for an event that costs money. And when I say event, I'm talking about the lounges and the clubs and things like that. And so if you are the type of person that still likes to go out on the, the weekends, or I'm not judging if you're one of the people that likes to go out during the week, weekdays too, to the clubs and whatnot, Think about only going to the places where the cover charge is free. And if you gotta get there before eight or before nine or before 10, whatever, if you gotta be there early to avoid the cover charge, do that. Since I had a goal to be debt free, I decided that I was going to stop spending money on interest. I decided that I was gonna figure out any single way that I could stop spending money on interest or reduce the amount of money that I spent on interest. So I made sure that I paid off my high interest credit card debt and any other debts that I was accumulating interest on. And then when it came to my student loans, I made sure that I applied for deferment since I was eligible as a postdoctoral student so that I could save myself some money. So not only was I saving myself money on a monthly basis, I was saving myself money in the long run as well. And so I definitely try to cut out the interest as much as possible. And it's really important, even if you aren't on a debt payoff journey, it's gonna save you so much money by cutting the interest out of your budget. So that way you have lots more money going to your goals and doing the things that you wanna do instead of going over to the banks and whoever else you might owe debt to. Now that I've gone over the 14 things that I've cut from my budget, you're probably thinking, now what do I do with that? How do I set up a budget? You can check out this video right here where I'm sharing my tips for how to create a budget that's gonna make it less overwhelming for you and make it very simple so that you can achieve your financial goals. I hope that you enjoyed this video and that you subscribe and hit the notification bell so that I can catch you in the next video. Thanks for watching.